In this video, we're going to take some examples like this one and apply the theory from the last couple of videos uh, to solve the system of simultaneous equations. I'm sure you could do it your own way, but I'm going to show it using augmented, mat augmented matrices and row operations. So what is the augmented matrix for this system of equations? Well, we take the coefficients 1, 2, 1, and then the constant 5 on the right hand side of the bar. And then the next row is going to be minus 1, 1, 2, 1. And the final row is going to be 1, 0, minus 1, 1. Because this, remember, is a Z, even though I've drawn it underneath the Y's, it's there's no Y there, so the coefficient of Y is 0. Okay, so this is our augmented matrix. Let's start doing row operations. First problem, it's not in echelon form because of these two entries. So we need to add or subtract multiples of row 1 to rows 2 and 3 to get rid of that. So um, let's copy this guy, put him down here. What am I going to do? I'm going to do row 2 goes to row 2 plus row 1. And then 1 plus 1 is 0, so that's going to become 0. This 1 is going to become a 3 because it gets 2 added to it. And this 2 is also going to become a 3. Uh, and this 1 is going to become a 6 because it gets 5 added to it. Um, I'm also going to do row 3 goes to row 3 minus row 1. And that's going to cancel this one here. That'll be a zero. This zero is going to become a minus two by the looks of it. And this minus one is also going to become a minus two because minus one minus one is minus two. And this one having five subtracted from it will become a minus four. Now, this second row has a lot of threes and things multiple, you know, multiples of three. So we're going to divide it by three. That's uh, one over three. Row two. And row three, everything is a multiple of minus two. So we're going to divide it by minus two. And what happens? These become ones. Uh, this becomes a two. These minus twos become ones. And the minus four becomes a two as well. Okay, this is still not in echelon form because uh, there's this one below the diagonal, so I'm going to subtract row two from row three. That one's going to go away and become a zero. Uh, but so is this one, and so is this two because we're subtracting the whole row off, right? So we get a row of zeros. So you see these zero rows arise naturally when your equations behave in this way. Okay, um, what's going on? We're in echelon form now. But we're not in reduced echelon form because this is a leading entry, this 1 in the middle, uh, and it has a 2 living directly above it. So we need to get rid of that. So we're going to do row 1 goes to row 1 minus row 2. 
in fact minus 2 row 2 to get rid of this 2 here and so the 2 is going to go away become a 0 Oops. this 1 is going to become a minus 1 because we're having 2 times 1 subtracted from it and the 5 is going to become a 1 and now this is in reduced echelon form. And all is well with the world. What system of equations does this correspond to? Let's write it out. It's x minus z equals 1. Uh, y plus z equals 2. And 0 equals 0. So this third equation is automatically true. It's just really a check that our original system had a solution. And the solution is, well, x equals 1 plus z and y equals 2 minus z. Here, z is a free variable and x and y are dependent variables that you can express in terms of z. And remember, we're using these two as the dependent variables because their coefficients are the leading entries in the matrix. And indeed z appears in both equations so we couldn't use it as a dependent variable. Okay, let's do another equation, another example. Let me get a new page. Um, so let's take uh, 2x plus 2y equals 2, x plus y plus z equals 8, x plus y minus z equals minus 5, and write the augmented matrix. So that's going to be 2, 2, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, 8, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 5. First thing we're tempted to do looking at this is divide row 1 by 2. So the 2's become 1's. I'm sure that's a song, isn't it? Um, okay, and then uh, we need to get rid of these entries here and here. So we're going to do uh, row 2 goes to row 2 minus row 1 and row 3 goes to row 3 minus row 1. So those ones are going to go away. Let me just keep track of changes in red. Uh, we're going to get 1 minus 1 here as well, so that's going to go away. And here. And then we get 1 minus 0, that stays as a 1. Minus 1 minus 0, that stays as a minus 1. And then 8 minus 1 is 7. And minus 5 minus 1 is minus 6. Okay, uh, this is not quite an echelon form because of this guy. So let's add row 2 to row 3. See what happens. Well, the minus 1 becomes a 0. And the minus 6 um, becomes a 1, because we added 7 to it. Now, in the last video, um, we had an example where there was a row of zeros and then a 3 on the other side. And we said that corresponds to the equation 0 equals 3. And it looked a bit artificial. But here we've seen exactly the same sort of thing happening 
completely naturally from a system of equations that you know looked completely reasonable to begin with. Um, okay, so what are these equations? They are x plus y equals 1, z equals 7, and 0 equals 1. So if this third equation weren't there, we would have um, one free variable y, and we'd have uh, x equals 1 minus y, and z equals 7, so x and z are dependent, and y is free. But the thing is, the third equation means there's, this is pointless because there's just no solution. So this 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 bit here would only be valid if if there were a solution. If this was zero equals zero. So um, this is an example of this happening in the wild rather than in a kind of artificial example. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go back to the system of equations up here. I want to replace this minus 5 by um, a kind of dummy variable which I'm going to call b and I want to do the same calculation and see what I get down here and then eventually what I hope is that this uh, 0 equals something will give me a constraint on b. So uh, maybe let me just get on with it. And, and it should become clear what I'm doing at the end. Um, I'm going to take this minus 5, replace it with a b, and we're going to write the augmented matrix. That's going to be exactly the same, except with a b instead of a minus 5. And now we're going to do our row operations. So we divide row 1 by 2. We subtract row 1 from row 2. Uh, so 0, 0, 7. And we subtract row 1 from row 3. 0, 0. And then b minus 1. All right, we're just treating this b as if it were a number but it's a variable, so it ends up being b minus 1. And then we add row 2 to row 3, so this becomes a 0, and this becomes a b plus 7 minus 1. Okay, so overall this entry here is b plus 6. So we see that this system of equations here only has a solution if b is minus 6. A solution exists if and only if b is minus 6. And in this case, the solution is exactly what I wrote up here. It's uh, x and z are dependent variables, y is free, and x is 1 minus y and z is 7. Okay, that comes from the first two rows. So the moral of this is any row of zeros in your matrix in reduced echelon form is giving you a constraint that has to be satisfied if the solution is to exist, and any of the other rows are giving you a way of expressing a dependent variable in terms of free variables.